All right. So I'm Dave Jenkins, uh, current president of the Pacific Northwest chapter of IECA. Uh, recently retired after 20 year, 22 years at the Port of Seattle as their erosion control stormwater engineer. Before that, I was three years at DOT, uh, statewide erosion control quarter, coordinator. And all of my experience has been in heavy civil transportation related construction. Um, and my disclaimer is any opinions expressed are mine solely, um, not necessarily the IECA's opinions. Um, go ahead and I'm gonna leave the chat open. So if you have any questions or comments as we go, go ahead and put it in the chat. And I'll try to get to it quick. Also, if you have any suggestions for uh, to future topics, we're gonna try to do these a couple times a month if we can, uh, if we don't have future technical difficulties anyway. All right, so learning objectives. Uh, uh, going to learn a few things about silt fence, when to use it, how to use it, when not to use it, and what else to use. And actually, I'm going to spend most of the time on what else to use. So since stormwater manuals have so much information on silt fence, on, on uh, how to install it, things like that, I'm not going to touch on that. Silt fence as a BMP, um, I think, is probably way overused, misused, and probably one of the more misunderstood BMPs. Uh, so I'll try to clear up some of this as we go. How much silt fence is used? Well, it turns out that WashDOT keeps records on everything and they have uh, data available on their website. So I was able to look up their silt fence use over the past 20 years. And as it turns out, uh, DOT has used enough silt fence to travel from Portland, Oregon to Seattle and back approximately 350 miles. So, and that's not picking on WashDOT, it's just everybody uses silt fence. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about whether some of the installations of silt fence actually are necessary. So silt fence is a physical barrier to water and sediment, but it's only one of many perimeter control BMPs. Downsides are that it's not biodegradable. It's almost never reused, mostly ends up in the landfill and it can't be recycled. I've looked and looked for somebody that would actually recycle it and it is not recyclable. As a perimeter control BMP purpose is to define a perimeter, uh, keep clean water out, keep dirty water in, keep sediment in and keep people out. Probably a few other things, but those are kind of the five main um, reasons for perimeter control BMPs. I'm going to go through a few slides here. I took a, a, at a project near my house. Uh, it's a period of several months, roughly from the same vantage point. And uh, I'd like you to keep, keep this in mind and keep the perimeter control definitions in mind as I walk through these. I'm not really going to say anything at this point. I'll go back to these uh, later in the presentation and, and talk in detail about them. But I think it's kind of amusing. I, so anyway. All right, so when should you use silt fence? Now, this is again, just my opinion. Um, I think probably the main use for silt fence is around um, either around stockpiles or not, not stockpiles at the base of some kind of slope. So in this case, it is a stockpile. Um, the, the silt fence is extremely strong when, and especially when installed properly. And it's very useful for protecting things like wetlands. So in this case, double silt fence was installed because to the left is a very sensitive wetland, uh, wetland and to the right is going to be a massive earthwork project. Uh, so getting, getting any dirt into the wetland is not acceptable. Um, so silt fence has some great uses. Notice that all of these installations I'm showing right now are on a contour on their level basically. And that's uh, one of the critical components to installing silt fence. It's also good for property protection. In this case, the railroad uh, owner didn't want any of our stuff on their property under any circumstance at any time. So silt fence was installed. Um, 
normally I wouldn't recommend doing this, but because of the sensitivities sensitivities with the adjacent property owner, uh, this silt fence made sense. How do you use silt fence? Again, I mentioned on contour. Uh, that's probably the, the reason why more silt fence installations fail than anything that they're not installed on contour, meaning um, silt fence is installed to wrap around a project completely and projects generally aren't flat. So there's silt fence on the top of the hills, uh, silt fence running straight down hills, things like that. That makes silt fence either useless or prone to failure. This shows how silt fence is supposed to be installed. Uh, you see these in the red oval area. You see four curved lines. That is, those are silt fence installations on contour. So instead of one long follow the perimeter silt fence installation running downhill, they have broken it up so that each one, each installation will fill up with sediment and overflow into the next one. So this actually is the proper, to, proper way to install silt fence on a perimeter. Now a few slides on when not to use silt fence. The silt fence has been in place for 20 years and I always uh, question why it was even needed. So this is a relatively flat project. Uh, there's a berm, natural berm on the property, uh, property line. So silt fence really wasn't necessary. Some kind of perimeter BMP would have been appropriate. And I'll show what some of those are uh, in a minute, but definitely a waste of silt fence, a waste of material, um, a waste of plastic that's gonna end up in the environment. This one's kind of iffy, but I've, I see it a lot around uh, the city of Seattle. So in the background, they, they had thought about what they're trying to do. So they installed an orange, orange construction fence along the top of a short slope to keep people out and keep them safe. They install black plastic on the cut slope to keep it from eroding. But why the silt fence is here, uh, I, I don't know what their thinking is. Um, I, if this were, were my site, I would put up a uh, temporary cyclone fence and put some kind of perimeter control. It could be silt fence attached to the cyclone fence. But this is installation, uh, just looking at as a casual observer makes no sense to me. How are you gonna access the site, for example? You know, workers are gonna have to step over it. How do you get equipment in there? So possible because this is a snapshot, it might just be, uh, they put it up for a week, I, I don't know. But as it is, it doesn't make sense. Same for this one, uh, you think about where the sediment is gonna be generated from and how much sediment could end up behind the silt fence. Well, the, the real water source on this other than raindrops hitting the small area with a shallow slope is water draining off the asphalt to the left. So either, in either case, there's not gonna be much sediment generated no matter what. And there, there are BMPs you can use um, that are more effective, easier to use, recyclable, et cetera, et cetera. So this also doesn't make sense. It is good that it's, well, actually, no, I, it's not attached to the cyclone fence. They installed it with metal T posts and everything. So if, if this were necessary, the fabric could have been attached and should have been attached right to the cyclone fence. Another one, um, a misunderstanding or not understanding what we're trying to accomplish. So this is a silt fence that's not really even trenched in for most of the distance. I think the idea is to protect the ditch line, um, keep staging area water from draining into the ditch. So, but again, you're gonna see a lot of options for doing the same thing that are more effective. This is, uh, to me, is a good example of, and, and I'll go into this later too as a project, uh, but see the silt self, fence in this picture is above the grade and surrounded by grass, at least on the left side. So what exactly is the purpose of the silt fence and what are we trying to accomplish with it? Do we even need silt fence on here? Um, looking at the entire project schedule and phasing, 
maybe at some point silt fence does make uh, perfect sense on some of this. But as this stands right now, this makes absolutely no sense. And then I'll leave you with a couple more installations. Uh, don't ever put silt fence in a concentrated flow of water, like a ditch line. Um, I, I see this quite a bit, and I'm, I'm not sure what the real purpose is, but uh, silt fence does not pass water, or if it does, it passes it extremely slowly so that any amount of flow in a ditch line is going to go around the ends of the silt fence. Um, you can see here turbid water slowly bleeding out of a silt fence, uh, which is the other issue. Any sediment that's in the water behind a silt fence will plug up the small holes in the silt fence and it becomes um, a impervious barrier to water and sediment, which actually is a good thing, but you need to keep that in mind. Um, that's really what the function of silt fence is, is a barrier. So another example of not the right BMP for the application, a uh, nice check dam would have been appropriate. So what other options do you have uh, instead of silt fence? Well, there's actually quite a few. Uh, most of them I think are not actually identified in any stormwater manual. Some of them are. A lot of these are just practices that contractors have used forever and uh, maybe not really knowing that they're uh, installing a perimeter control. So I'm um, just gonna run through a whole list of things you can use. You can use combinations of these, uh, be creative, think out of the box and all that sort of stuff. So 10 ounce burlap, this is something that I, I started using, I don't know, five, six years ago. Um, in particular in projects where we could leave it, we wouldn't have to take it out after the project. This is actually establishing a wetland buffer boundary. You can see some wetland plants up in the top right. So it serves a purpose of identifying the boundary, uh, keeping people out. You could attach signs to it if you wanted. Um, and then it stays in place and slowly rots away. So completely biodegradable installation. Burlap with a waddle, if you do have to contain or have the potential for containing some sediment, uh, but burlap fence is appropriate for what you're doing, then you can um, install a burlap fence so it has a flap on the bottom like you would typical silt fence. But instead of trenching it in, install something over it. So in this case, it's a straw wattle staked in on the flap. You could also uh, do things like if you have chipped up wood from, the, from your project, you could put a wood chip berm on the flap and do the same thing. This is a pretty flat site. Uh, very shallow slopes. It's going to be planted with native plants and then entirely mulched. So uh, it's fairly quick work. Uh, we want to get it done and not have to go back. So all of this installation stays in place to slowly rot away. Another, uh, another example of that, burlap attached to cyclone fence with a compost sock berm laying on the burlap flap at the bottom. Now this is installed on a uh, project boundary line, which happens to be the neighbor's property line. And to the left of the fence, the drainage goes into their swale, stormwater swale, which they're regulated for the storm, stormwater discharges. Now this project actually with, you see the log structure on the extreme right, from that point, down to the right about 40 feet is gonna be a cut three to one slope. So right away, we're not gonna, there's no possibility for eroded material to get through the fence or over to the fence. So, you know, technically I, I suppose we wouldn't have to put anything here, but um, you know, it's a good, I guess, public relations at the very least. Uh, and if something does happen to get stirred up, it's going to be stopped by this. Orange safety fence is very useful for a lot of things um, and it's reusable. Silt fence by the nature of the installation has to be pretty much ripped out of the ground to remove it. Um, sometimes it can be saved and, and reused on other projects, but for the most part, it's not usable after uh, one use. 
if you just need to delineate an area, uh, orange construction fence is great stuff and is reusable for quite a while. Doesn't need to be trenched in. I mentioned the projects where people wrap the perimeter with silt fence going uphill, downhill, top of hill. Uh, you can break it up. So install the silt fence where it's appropriate, where if you do get erosion, um, you need to catch it, keep it, keep it from leaving the site. And there's areas where that doesn't make sense, but you still want to identify a perimeter. So this is a perfect material to use for that. This is something I just found, I think last year, year before, I'd never used it before. Uh, it's sand, sand or snow fence and it's uh, wooden slats you know, with uh, held together with wire and installed, not, not trenched in, just installed and held in place by steel T-posts like you use on silt fence. Excuse me, another um, angle of that. And this is purely to keep people from walking down into the project. Um, from what I can tell, this is the same uh, as the, the orange construction fence as far as longevity. Actually, I think this is, has better longevity. It's not really all that expensive and it can be rolled up and reused many times. So if you're just trying to keep people out, um, this is a great option, I think. Compost, if you have access to compost, like we do in Puget Sound, um, if you have a flat area, there's really, in many cases, no reason to install silt fence. So this is out at SeaTac International Airport where we have 1200 acres of essentially flat, although it's not really flat. I mean, the slopes are like 30 to one slopes and it's a um, tremendous amount of asphalt and concrete. So even a little bit of rain creates a lot of runoff. Um, so what we end up doing is being creative with the berms, either to keep runoff from going into the project or contain a project with something like compost, which we can spread out after the project is done and hydro seed over it. Another example of that, and actually three, uh, three different perimeter controls. So we do have silt fence on the right and the area to the right of the silt fence is going to have some massive excavation work going on. The area in the middle, uh, we don't want touched. So we uh, installed the construction or safety fence on two of the sides of the triangle. And then because there is gonna be some limited work on the tractor side of the fence, uh, some saw cutting and things like that, there is possible po a possibility for runoff uh, with some pH or some turbidity. So we're installing compost along the edge to manage that. And then of course, again, that'll be spread out and uh, kept in place. Compost socks are something that I've seen used more and more. And these are great when you're working in, on, or around asphalt or uh, impervious surface. So it's their um, tubes of plastic mesh stuffed with compost and um, they work great. I really like them. They are sensitive to traffic. So you need to keep them away from vehicles. But in this case, uh, the site, the construction site to the right is swept continuously. So uh, there's very little sediment generated. Uh, mostly we just need to control the flow of water and any oil, grease or uh, minimal sediment that ends up to the edge of the proje project um, is trapped or contained by the compost berms. And then potentially, as, you know, as long as you don't have a bunch of um, you know, any chemicals or oils and greases and stuff in it, potentially on, uh, on a site, you might be able to cut the fabric and spread out the compost, um, use it in a landscaped area or something. Asphalt is a very durable and uh, effective perimeter control on, especially again on uh, projects with that have a lot of asphalt. So this is containing a uh, stockpile area, cold patch asphalt and Jersey barriers. This is kind of cool, um, doing a storm tie-in in the middle of the street. So just using asphalt, they've managed to direct 
uh, stop and direct the clean flow from the street to the left, direct it over into the curb line and right to a catch basin to keep it out of the work area. And then the work area is also contained with the asphalt curbing and the street curbing and where it's, it drains to a sump pump on the right behind the sandbags and the, any water is pumped back into the site for infiltration. And another example of that, so silt fence in the soil areas and then the, the street crossing is um, hot mix asphalt to contain everything. Used a lot on the, at SeaTac, um, water, clean water from the right, a lot of clean water actually, uh, because that's a taxiway to the right, is directed with an extruded asphalt curb to the grassy area, to a low spot where um, a sump pump or a, a, a pump on a float switch is set up to pump away from the project area into more grass to the south of this, uh, this area. So, as I mentioned, we use a lot of these or used a lot of these. Um, this is keeping clean water out of the work area. So another, another benefit of perimeter control, and this is keeping dirty water away from the work area. This is something I've only seen used once, but it was very effective. Now, triangular silt dikes, if you're familiar with them, are uh, really a really great product to, to use for a check dam in a ditch. This is an excellent example of that. But on a project, we needed to have an access point for uh, deliveries. And of course, silt fence doesn't make sense. We're not gonna put Jersey barriers. We also don't want site water draining out into the street. So a contractor came up with this idea, laying triangular silt dikes along the edge connecting them up with hog rings and then placing hot mix asphalt on the flap, the up, uh, ups, uphill side flap, so that all of the site water was contained, but they could still drive in and out. Curb and gutters, if you have a project where you're going to be installing curbs and gutters, um, Sometimes it's a benefit to install them earlier in the project than wait till the end, which is fairly standard practice. In this case, contractor installed very early so that they were able to contain almost all of the site water within the actual work area. And then the perimeter areas were, uh, you know, vehicles stayed out of them. They were able to hide receipt earlier than they typically would. Um, they had the gravel base down for the road, future road surface. And uh, it was a term, provided tremendous benefit, both for containing the site, but also preventing track out. Another example of this, this should look familiar from a previous slide. Original erosion plan for this project was silt fence along the right side, the entire project. Uh, working with the contractor was decided that, hey, you know, we can, we can get the curb in quicker than we had planned. We'll just change the schedule. It's no cost or schedule impact to it and no need for silt fence. So it was a very long, I don't know how many hundreds of feet this curb was, but another thing that uh, we discovered a couple of years ago was cutting trenches or cutting out asphalt to create infiltration trenches. Uh, how we found this out was uh, we had an emergency where we had to dredge out a whole bunch of material and we needed to stockpile it. We were gonna end up putting a lot of it back in place. Um, so we needed a quick and dirty location for this and uh, figured out, well, cell fence or other perimeter controls are not gonna work for this. Let's cut the asphalt. It's easier and, and uh, relatively cheap to just replace it and uh, infiltrate the water. So this was a very effective perimeter control um, where cell fence couldn't have worked. Sandbags, uh, this project, a tremendous amount of clean water drained off the asphalt to the left and uh, was draining into the work area or would have drained into the work area. So it was decided to build a sandbag dam across the ditch up under the bridge, angle it over to this sandbag installation 
so that all of the clean water in the ditch line beyond the bridge and then street runoff ended up being bypassed around the project. I would do this different now. This was, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. It's very effective, but uh, extruded curbing would probably work better. This is straw bales wrapped in plastic used to um, create an area for a stockpile. And this is standard geotextile or silt fence type fabric wrapped around straw wattles held in place with sandbags. This could also be glued in place with some kind of epoxy glue or something. Uh, but again, this, this is an older picture and um, asphalt probably would be easier to use. Um, this possibly, uh, it's actually, I think they needed to move this Jersey barrier a couple of times. So this installation made sense and, and uh, this type of installation would make sense over asphalt. Um, if you needed to move your fence line. This is something that a contractor brought to a project a number of years ago. It's a water-filled uh, PVC berm. These are typically used as a spill prevention device or containment device. So um, if, you, if you were to go to one of the spill uh, prevention containment websites where they sell products. This is something that you would see on one of those or several of those sites actually. Contractor brought them in just to provide some barriers to keeping water out of their work area. I've um, seen this used a number of times. This was not one of my projects, but um, we have used them at the port where you have a lot of existing vegetation and um, you scrape the vegetation off to the side and use that as your perimeter control. Um, if it's going to be there long term and there's a lot of bare soil with it, you could cover it with straw or something. But actually with just a little bit of rain, the grass continues to grow. So you'll have a vegetated berm after a pretty short period of time. And then if your project uh, allows it, you know, if you have an area right there where you're going to be hydro seeding anyway, you can actually spread this out and track walk it in, back into the soil and it'll grow. Gravel, uh, in this case, the road is being widened, so they had to spread gravel base course and um, to provide a barrier and to protect the area to the left, they just built up a crushed base course berm along the edge uh, to keep the, yeah, again, keep the area from the left from eroding. So using materials that you're gonna use anyway um, and just using, using them creatively can help you out, save some money. So this would have been a typical sill fence installation location. Coir logs, uh, just like the burlap fence. Um, if you're doing a planting or working around a wetland, something like that, Co coir or coconut logs, they're 100% biodegradable if they use the coconut twine netting to hold them together. So this was a native plant uh, planting area out of SeaTac. Um, so that was the perimeter control was coir and left in place. So you can still see some of the stakes out there actually. This was done you know, seven, eight years ago. Consider your edges, and uh, this is something, again, around paved surfaces. This is an area where the asphalt's been ground out for some uh, future underground utility work, but there's a six to 12 inch edge. Uh, you know, it's a drop from the surrounding asphalt to this area. Um, so that provides you a perimeter. So no need to attach any fencing, any silt fencing or anything. This, this can be enough depending on your project. Another example of that, um, this is a concrete fence foundation, security foundation and a low spot on the project. So silt fence didn't make sense. Contractor ended up digging it out a little bit and using it to contain water from the project. Any uh, type of trenching that you're doing could end up being a perimeter control. 
when working in around asphalt. You could also use it again as an infiltration trench. If you need to drive over it, you just fill up a section with quarry spalls. Dirt berms. Um, this is very effective if you're doing a lot of earthwork to keep stuff from going over the, the edge and down a slope. So this uh, particular installation was part of one of the big earthwork projects out at the airport. And it was actually designed this way. So the contractor actually bid, to, bid it to do this, uh, maintain this type of berm situation. And uh, okay, so I've got some project examples I'll go through. I think I'm probably running a little bit over time. Now I want to go back to this one and um, hopefully you see um, you've been thinking about this a little bit as I've been presenting and you know what the solution to this or a, a solution to this would be. Um, get your curb in or if you can't do that, if it doesn't make sense, put in a, an extruded asphalt curbing on the edge of asphalt at the edge of the road and put up a safety fence or something to delineate. Silt fence uh, just does not make sense here. And especially when you look at um, all of the changes they made with the silt fence, the cost to do that, the labor and stuff. So, all right, uh, the dirt berms, this is the project I was talking about. It was about a 600 acre, 20 million cubic yard fill job and Silt fence is placed along the edges. Unfortunately, it had to go uphill, downhill, et cetera, et cetera. But we didn't rely on the silt fence as our main perimeter control. So everything within the project um, had some kind of berm, dirt berm constructed to direct water to um, areas that water could be pumped to a treatment system. So you see a dirt berm angling across the center. Um, there's a there's one, two, three, there's five dirt berms angled across the slope in the background used to direct water to the, uh, the area to the right. And there's a dirt berm around the top of the stockpile on uh, right of center. So it was just, just became a standard practice on that work. This one, um, I'll just show you, it's, it's really, it's this project with the cell fence I showed earlier. This is the original erosion control plan. The green line around the outside is the silt fence perimeter. Um, and I think it was designed that way to accommodate a temporary sediment pond and a storm system that working with the contractor, it was decided we don't need that extra storm system. So let's move the silt fence to the blue line, which saves a whole bunch of grass area and uh, connect two catch basins to complete the storm system, uh, a smaller storm system, and it worked great. So we didn't really need to install the, the blue line silt fence, probably didn't need, again, a lot of the silt fence, but working with the contractor, we came up with something that worked better um, and involved, in this case, plastic on a preload fill that had to sit over winter, gravel base that was going to be used under future asphalt. Um, all the water was pumped from the low spot back into the grass out into perforated pipe. So much better system and accomplished all the goals that we had. Uh, and we could have saved a lot of silt fence too. So um, I think I have a couple more in here just real quick. So I pretty much already showed this asphalt berm to direct water. This is really looking the other way from the picture I showed earlier. And then compost, same project, compost berm to contain. Uh, says I've got five minutes. I don't know what's going on with Zoom here. So I'm gonna make it quick so we don't cut off. And then lastly, silt fence around a, a soil stockpile to contain sediment at, as the grass is growing and then a berm around the top, directing water to pipe slope drains down to the base. So these are all things, I mean, that, that is a good use of silt fence, but uh, rather than using silt fence on the top of the pile, then this works great. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here and ask that if you have any comments, questions, um, please send them 
to pnwieca info at gmail.com. Um, please check out our website for future events and please stay tuned to LinkedIn for the same reason. And please um, ask your friends and colleagues to check out the LinkedIn and website for future. We're gonna again, try to do these twice a month. Uh, really like your input on future uh, presentation ideas so that we can get you guys what you want. We do have a presentation schedule for August 25th. It's going to be on, um, I can't remember the exact name of it. It is how to, basically how to divert uh, small and large streams to do work. So please look into that. I'll, I'll uh, be posting some information on the website shortly. So thank you all, appreciate you attending. I apologize for glitches and um, hope to see you again soon or have you attend soon. Thank you very much.